So my uh, actual talk <laughs> is a lot shorter than the title that I put on um, the program because I realized I couldn't fit it on the slide. Uh, <laughs> but essentially what I'm going to talk to you about are some online interactive resources that we've developed over the past uh, three, four years grant funded. These are collaborations of faculty, uh, people just like you, um, faculty and staff at different uh, universities, mostly small liberal arts colleges, working together. Here is a, a, a room full of some of our uh, uh, illustrious designers who are sitting together really thinking about this. Um, but basically, these were folks who were faced with a particular pedagogical challenge or interest or issue and got together to see if they could create some online interactive resources that could be used either in a blended course or um, an online course or a face-to-face -face course of some kind that students could use. Um, these are actually available for you to use now, and I'll tell you how to get them and what they are. Um, so we had two grants uh, projects. One is the Teagle Foundation, their hybrid learning in the residential liberal arts experience. Many of you were at their meetup this morning. Um, the other one was a FIPSI, uh, U.S. Department of Education, FIPSI, First in the World grant. I have to say all of those things whenever I refer to it by law, just <laughs> FYI. <laughs> um, so the first one, uh, the one funded by the Teagle Foundation was a psychology research methods and statistics course. And these were, for faculty that teach this course, it's typically an intro level or intermediate level course. Um, you don't know where students come from, but you know that they come with a very wide range of experience. So this is just responses from students in the pretest that we're using for evaluation. Um, just here at Bryn Mawr, you can see um, over the times that we've taught this, you know, about half of them have had some statistics and probability that could, and we, I think in the actual thing it says in a high school course. So, you know, I know what probability is, right? But <laughs> that could be anything, right? But then some of them have had no prior experience whatsoever. Some of them have already had college level statistics. So how do you teach a course like this that's introductory, but your students are all over the map, right? Um, and the answer is you come up with these, uh, in this case, we've done about 20 topic-based models. So the faculty got together and said, of this course, it's taught differently at every institution. Some teach two courses, one research methods, the other statistics, some lump it all together. Um, they teach all different topics, but you know, this is sort of the, the collective set of things we might teach. And then we developed um, a topic-based model. We broke that down into topics came up with learning objectives for each topic and then sort of designed the, the module around those. Um, and the modules included, did I get this mastery assessment, which most faculty assign so that the students can show I did get this, right? Um, and the students can do that a couple of times. And if they take it the first time and they discover, hey, maybe not so much, um, then they can go back and all of these sort of sub modules are content review and practice exercises that they can work through as much as they need in order to pass the mastery assessment. Um, the other group was the just-in-time blended mass review, and we've got three flavors, calculus, chemistry, and physics. And here it was um, grappling with the question of students who are marginally math prepared. And what that means in our context is they come into college, college ready in math, according to whatever standards their college have, but they're not really ready enough um, to thrive in a STEM course, right? So they're not going to get a B plus maybe necessarily their first time out. And a B plus seems to be what students want to see in an intro course to believe that this is a major they could take, right? So this is taking kids who are interested possibly in STEM, but maybe need a little bit of extra help. And in some cases we found, particularly with trigonometry, for example, it's taught really widely differently. And so you may not have had it at all and you need it in physics, right? Or you may have had it um, to a great extent, but who knows? So here we, the faculty came up with the sandwich model. Okay, so there's uh, again modular, uh, each broken down into disciplinary topics, and each disciplinary topic starts with a gateway problem that has a sort of classic disciplinary problem. Um, in this case, motion in a straight line, for example, might be a physics one. So there's a faculty member who walks them through a, a problem and solving a problem. A little video about that. And then there are recommended math review modules that say, hey, to solve this problem, here's some of the math skills you're drawing on. And this came out of one of the things we discovered was there are all kinds of math review 
resources out there, but they're things like solving for a variable. I don't know what solving for a variable is. You know, like, I don't know which one to go to. They're all described in a math way. And so what this did was say, hey, here's this disciplinary, disciplinary thing we're having you do in physics and chemistry and calculus. Here's the math review stuff you need to go to. And so we had these then math review modules that they could go to where there was that mastery test, where there were those practice exercises and all the scaffolding. And then they come back and do a do-it-yourself version of this gateway program a problem where they go through the same problem and then apply those math skills that they've learned. And this is the one that reports back to the faculty member and they can see how the faculty are doing. So all of this was developed in a platform called My Open Math. If you teach math at all, I recommend you look at it anyway. Um, it is basically designed to be the online homework solution for OER textbooks and things like this, right? So things that are free, this is the free platform that goes along with it. Um, you can adopt these, you can adapt them, you can take anything that we did and completely change it. You could, if you teach, um, say, sociology, you could take all the psych examples out and put sociology ones in if you wanted, um, whatever. And here are the stuff. Again, we'll share the slides so you'll have everything. And you can ask me questions if you have any.